Hey guys, I hope that paper two went okay and we just have one more A-level chemistry paper to go this year, which is of course our perhaps slightly dreaded paper three. I've not put up a prediction video before this because it's actually a little bit harder to gauge paper three because obviously it's going to be a bit more dependent on what comes up in paper one and paper two every year. So at the time that I'm recording this, you're sitting paper two, and so I don't know what's on it. <laughs> and I've got some ideas of what was on paper one, but of course I'm not able to see paper one. So based on that, this is some ideas for, just based on previous years, what I think in terms of a couple of things. So topic areas, but also practicals, because a lot of students ask me what practicals they think might come up. So I definitely think uh, in terms of specific topics that we should be thinking about reactions of halide ions um, and displacement. So that is solid halides with conk sulfuric acid. It hasn't been in for a while and I think that it's definitely a paper three style topic. It's quite a synoptic area. So the redox reactions, we talked about it in paper one and it didn't come up. So just make sure that you give yourself a refresher and also just displacement of halides. So really quite the classic um, halogens reacting with halides in displacement reactions. Just make sure you know your colours and things like that. It's also a potential practical question. Right. Um, Ka and buffers. So we've had some Kp. We've had a little bit on Kw not quite so much on weak acid buffer calculations. So that's always a strong area to think about for paper three. Entropy and delta G has come up, but not in a big way. Um, and again, that's a synoptic area to look at. For example, like the entropy change in a system as you're going from solids to gases or changing the number of moles. And delta H and Hess's law, unless it's come up big style in paper two, then that's a good paper three area. And that is because, of course, you could have some practicals related to that, which I'll get onto when we look at the practical slide. But delta H, uh, generally like Hess cycles, making sure that you are familiar with using those. Bonding shaping, bonding shapes of molecules, sorry, intermolecular forces. Um, there's a big thing that comes up in the multiple choice section. So to make sure that you know your bond angles, your shapes, uh, intermolecular forces and how they relate to boiling points as well. Uh, and if it hasn't come up a lot in terms of the organic molecules in paper two, then it can come back up in paper three. Also, what I was going to say uh, with bonding, that's where weird dot and cross diagrams come up as well. Um, tend to come up more in the paper three. So like unfamiliar dot and cross diagrams, especially for covalent ions and things like that. Reaction conditions. So what I mean by reaction conditions for equilibrium is those kind of six mark questions where they talk about why a particular um, reaction, a reversible reaction, would have a particular set of temperature and pressure conditions in industry. Um, so looking at compromised temperatures, so for example, an exothermic reaction, needing a high enough temperature to get the rate, low enough temperature to get a decent yield. So there's loads of six markers on that, and uh, it's a really popular area to ask longer questions about. We've already had a long catalyst question this year, but nothing much on equilibrium position. Okay, what about practical stuff? So, of course, you should be familiar with all your practicals. Please don't take everything I'm saying as like gospel. This is just some ideas for key practical areas to focus on. One of those, of course, is testing for ions every year. We've had a little bit on transition metals, but not a much. So I feel like in inorganic analysis question, especially testing for those negative ions, things like halides, Make sure you know why you add your acid. Make sure you know your colours and your observations and your ionic equations. Redox titrations. Um, so we've had a bit of titration with solubility, but I think redox titration um, is almost always comes up somewhere. 
pH curves because we haven't had a lot on weak acids and so pH curves and choosing the right indicator might be coming up as well. Um, chromatography, I have not mentioned that before and I haven't seen it in a while. So chromatography particularly for separating amino acids and amino acids generally. So if there's not been much on amino acids in paper two, then make sure that you're ready. Usually just things like drawing the structure of zwitter ions and making sure that you can draw the structure of di or tripeptides uh, and you can show how they come together. Also, I forgot to put this on here, but actually polyamides, if they didn't come up in paper two. Um, reflux and distillation, just your basic organic techniques, making sure you know how to draw diagrams of those and describing a rates experiment. So just being able to say how you would monitor, say, a gas given off, how you would monitor something like the disappearing cross reaction, how you would perhaps carry out an iodine clock reaction or using colorimetry to monitor the rate of a reaction. Now, that could have come up in paper two. Of course, you're sitting it right now. I don't know what's on there. Feel free to comment on this video what types of uh, practical based questions came up. So I haven't included recrystallization here because I was relatively sure it's going to be on paper two. But if it's not, just mention that because maybe we should look at recrystallization. Um, when you are describing a rates experiment, just a little thing to think about. Always state what you're going to change, how you're going to change it. You might have to talk about dilutions, diluting solutions to make like a different concentrations. Talk about um, obviously what you will measure. Always talk about measuring time in some way and then some monitoring of the time taken for a cross to disappear, the time taken for um, to collect a particular volume of gas, that kind of thing. Um, if the question talks about results and what you're going to do with your results, make sure you're clear if you need to plot a graph. For example, if you were doing our Arrhenius experiment with temperature, you've got to say what you're going to plot a graph of and what you're going to do with that graph. Or if you were using colorimetry, that you would need to plot a calibration curve so that you knew the absorption against the concentration. And in a rates experiment, it's really important to talk about controls. So controlling temperature, if you're not changing that, using a water bath, uh, putting everything in the water bath to start with before you mix them, controlling volume and concentration of solutions where it needs to be. And then perhaps you would also talk about controlling surface area of a solid, although that doesn't come up as much. Okay, um, just a recap of the things. Obviously, I don't, it's no point really signing up now for any group classes or anything, but you can get free retrieval practice quizzes uh, on the website. And those are helpful because of the sort of short, just recap of particular techniques and areas. Practice questions and walkthroughs, specifically things like bonding, if you haven't looked at those, they're quite good for paper three because they've got lots of examples of like difficult dot and cross diagrams, things like that. And of course, MCQs. So uh, you're going to have a lot of MCQs in paper three at the end, multiple choice questions. So there's a whole set of those for free on my website with video walkthroughs. And of course, practice papers and predictive papers. If you've not used those, if you've not downloaded those, then have a go at paper one and paper three and paper two, because of course, the whole idea of paper three is it's mixed topics. Uh, so if there's anything that I put in the papers that hasn't come up, then it might come up later on. And also I've got a whole set of extended response questions. So sort of six mark questions to help you with your vocabulary, the kind of things that definitely come up in that last paper. Good luck. I hope it all goes well.